Thank you very much. Thanks to the Wisconsin Clean Transportation Group for organizing this. And thank you all for coming. I will try to speak as slowly as I can so that my mind can keep up with my mouth. And I think it makes it a little bit easier to hear in the acoustics of this place. So um, I'm a faculty member. I'm not a fleet manager. I teach in the College of Engineering at Marquette University. And the story that I want to tell is about the importance of education to all of us in Wisconsin. Without an educated workforce, none of you can do the things that you want to do. And it's our schools and universities in the state that have, have made us an, an, in, an economic engine for years. So I'm going to talk about a project that some of my engineering students have worked on for the last several years, our electric limo. It's a big blue, blue van parked over here, and I hope that you'll stop by and take a look. So let me tell you a little bit about the story. So Marquette University, we're an urban campus, and we're small. But we still have transportation needs. So our university has a student transportation service that runs from about 5 o'clock in the evening till about 2 or 3 in the morning every day of the year to transport our students around the campus for their convenience and protection. Um, they don't get mugged when they're in one of our veins. This service has been in operation for about 26 years. I think they claim to have transported over a million students. Um, you said that some of your vans might get six or seven miles per gallon. Our gasoline-powered vans run under five miles per gallon year-round, constant stopping and starting and waiting for students to get on and off and all that kind of thing. It's a wonderful service for our students, but several years ago, a group of the students in my senior engineering capstone class all engineers everywhere in the country take a similar class because it's required by our accrediting agencies. They're project classes, and so the students work in teams of usually about four or five, sometimes a little larger, on various engineering projects, often with industrial sponsors. If any of you are interested in sponsoring projects, talk to either to me or the engineering faculty here at UW. A group of students came to me in the summer and they said, we'd like to take one of these old vans and we'd like to make it an electric vehicle. I said, that's a wonderful idea. And I came this close to saying, no, you can't do it. It's too hard a project for you. But one of the things that I've learned running our senior design class is that we're not an engineering consulting firm. We are a university. Delivering a product is important, but educating students is more important. And if you have a really hard, challenging project, you're going to learn more than if you have an easy one. You might fail, that happens once in a while, but you're going to learn a lot. So I said, okay, go ahead, let's see what happens. So they went to the university administration and said, can we have a van? administration said, sure, we have this one that's on its way to the junkyard. We're not going to get anything out of it anyway. Go ahead, you can have it. So we got this big old banged up van. We took the gasoline engine and the transmission out of it. I say we liberally. I didn't do anything. The students did all the work. Uh, we were very fortunate to work with the Milwaukee Area Technical College. They have a great automotive mechanics program. They let us use some of the space uh, and provided some of the tools and supervision for our students to do a lot of the work. We couldn't have succeeded without that. Uh, then we put an electric motor, so we have a 55 horsepower motor in the van and the controllers for that, and we started putting it together. But then, of course, what's the next thing you need to have an electric vehicle? Batteries. Batteries aren't cheap. We're in Milwaukee, we thought, oh gee, we should put Johnson Control batteries in our vehicle. 
There were some challenges with that, but when we finally got to talk to the engineers at Johnson Controls, after a lot of discussions with our students, oh, and one of the students got a job offer and is working for them now, uh, that's a huge win for us. That's the main product that we have, educated students. The engineers at Johnson Controls said, you know, the batteries that we offer, we think that they're going to a manufacturer who's going to build some infrastructure around them and build the stuff that it takes to go with them. We don't really have the product that you need for your van. Uh, so why don't you go get it someplace else? Well, that's when Maria and her program stepped in and helped us with the money that it took to get the batteries. We ended up buying batteries from Valence Technologies and, and I'm here today. So we, we revised things, we put in lithium ion batteries. We had to replace the power steering, the air conditioning, the heating, and everything that's usually powered by, by those belts with uh, suitable electric parts. Scavenged from all kinds of interesting places. You turn a bunch of engineering students loose with a few wrenches and, and a few dollars, but not very many dollars in their pockets, they can do some amazing things. And, and my students did. So uh, the project started in 2007. By 2011, we were able to license it. You would not believe the excitement that can be carried in the text of an email message by the first group of students to drive the van on the street. You know, how, just, I mean, you could, you could feel the pride in the text. It was really amazing and, and a lot of fun. We had a few challenges licensing it too, and Mark helped a lot with that, but finally it dawned on us, we didn't do anything to this. We, we just converted it. We just replaced one motor with another, hadn't been licensed for two or three years, applied for a new license, everything was fine. When we were trying to license it in a special way, um, we, we made a lot of problems for ourselves. So the van has been in intermittent service for a couple of years, and I drove it here. I didn't drive it all the way here. Let me go to the next slide, please. So we find that, so common question for all of us with these sorts of vehicles is how far does it go? <clears throat> we find in normal service, this van has a range of, oh, 40, maybe 50 miles. Now that's driving around the city streets with lots of stopping and starting. In case you haven't checked your GPS lately, it's more than 40 or 50 miles between Milwaukee and Madison. So I drove the van last night to Ben Nelson's house. Thank you very much, Ben. I really appreciate the hospitality. Ben charged the van for me, and I started this morning at about 4.30 in the common walk. That's 55 miles away. My calculation was if I were careful, the range of the vehicle at 40 degrees Fahrenheit was 55 miles. I was really nervous. Mark and I exchanged, I don't know how many email messages yesterday, and he was prepared to drive in Highway B to see if I was stopped along the way. Well, I drove, the temperature was a little above 40 this morning. That was a good thing. I have never driven so carefully in my life. I drove most of the way at about 25 to 30 miles an hour. I enjoyed the horn honks and salutes of several passing drivers. <laughs> I expect that the trip home will be worse, but the temperature will be higher, so perhaps I'll go a little faster. But that kind of rain story is not the point. This van is it, it's something that we all want to know, and, and I'm happy to share the story. I'm really happy to be here. But the van is intended to be used three or four miles from its home base, and if the, the gauge starts getting low, they can just pull into the parking structure and pull another van out and go along the way. It really surprised me when I talked to one of the supervisors who drives these vans regularly. She didn't care how far it would go on a charge. She cared how long it would go. Will it go a whole shift, which is about four hours? And the answer is sometimes yes, sometimes 
snow, it depends on the temperature, but range in terms of distance was not what she was worried about. So we've had a lot of help from people, and we've had a lot of challenges. Um, we started with an old van, and it's still an old van. We were very pleased that once we got it road licensed, the university sent it back to the body shop and had, I think, about $10,000 worth of body work done on it so that it looks as presentable as it does today. One of the main functions is to go to events like this and show off and tell a story about what Marquette engineering students and, and all of the wonderful students in Wisconsin are able to do. One of uh, this year's challenges was at the end of the previous team, these were the, you're not supposed to read them, these are the instructions that the driver had to follow to start the van. <laughs> That's not the right answer. Next slide. So what we did was we replaced a lot of manual and electronic controls with an electronic uh, controller. Uh, that's, that, that works much better. It's still not exactly the same as any other vehicle, but it's close. So, I hope what you hear the story, this is not a story of fleet man. If you listen to this and say, should I do what Marquette did with their electric van? No, you shouldn't. Um, but, but then we had a lot of horsepower people, and that was the main thing. We have a good van out. It's a lot of fun to drive. I really enjoyed the trip here. I'm looking forward to the trip home, except for the salutes of passing motorists. Um, our students have had a good time with this project. So we made several appearances. Uh, there are a few statistics here about the performance of the van, uh, but the performance that I really care about are the performance of, of my students. So all of the, there have been, I think, 47 students who have worked on the van. Uh, all of them are employed, that's a good thing. Many of them are employed in technical careers. They've learned a lot about project management, about creative problem solving. The technical skills are important, but the people skills and the process and the other things that they've learned are at least as important. They've learned a lot about teamwork. Um, there's some interesting dynamics when you get you know, five, six, seven people who are less than a month away from graduation on Saturday night who are working in the shop instead of other places where they might be at that time of day. This is the kind of reaction. This was spontaneous. I, I, I staged some pictures, but I didn't stage that one. Those are two of the students that are really excited about, in, in this case, we had just gone through a, a very narrow spot, um, and they were just so pleased with what they felt that they had accomplished. Uh, that, that's kind of what we would like to do. So these are some of the quotations from some of our alumni. Uh, if you really want to read them, they're on the poster over by the van. They help show that our product are students. They're students from universities like UW, like Marquette, like the University of Wisconsin system, who provide the economic engine to help all of you with whatever you're undertaking. So I appreciate very much the chance to talk with you. And you said you want to wait for questions until we're all done? Okay, thank you very much.